Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really honored to speak to you today at the Smart City 360 Summit, even though I could not participate in person. Today, I am in Bucharest on my 19th stop of the Pan-European Energy Union Tour, but I could not miss the opportunity to greet you in both cities, Bratislava and Toronto. And I am really happy to give my patronage to this important event, which brings together researchers, industry and government organization to address the challenges of future cities and citizens. The challenge that lie ahead have to be met with a world open collaborative spirit as no city or even nation can tackle all of them alone. The numbers are staggering. Currently, more than half of the world population lives uh, in the cities, which is expected to account for about 70% by 2050. Currently, nearly 2 billion new urban residents are expected in the next uh, 20 years. Also, city account for some 70% of the global GDP, and no country has grown to middle income status without industrializing and urbanizing. By 2050, three quarters of the energy will be consumed in cities, accounting for about the same share of greenhouse gas emissions. It is now more clear than ever that the cities is the place where sustainable development challenges will be concentrated more and more, hand in hand with the pace of urbanization. Cities, large and small, are fundamental to implement energy transition, but also to boost Europe's competitiveness, growth and job creation. The Energy Union will bring about a fundamental transition in Europe's energy system aid aimed at ensuring secure, sustainable and competitive energy to all energy consumers. It will do so by involving all players in the energy chain. And this includes, but goes beyond, industry and regulators. Citizens should be placed at the centre of energy policy and they too should play an active role. Cities are at the interface between the activation of citizens and consumers. They are also promoting change by investing in energy efficient renovation of buildings, making transport more sustainable on a daily basis and by supporting vulnerable consumers. Smart cities offer tremendous opportunities for a triple gain, improving quality of life for European citizens, improving the competitiveness of our economies and leading the way towards a sustainable, low-carbon economy. But how can we help our smart city actors to take a prominent, active role in a strong growth market estimated globally at 1.3 trillion euros in 2020? For example, the European Commission established two well-known city-focused initiatives, notably the Covenant of Mayors and the Smart Cities and Communities European Innovation Partnership to connect political commitment of cities with concrete tools for action. Back in 2008, when the Commission launched the Covenant of Mayors, nobody could have imagined that a bottom-up practical initiative meant uh, at, at uh, involving local authorities in ambitious EUI energy and climate objectives could grow to become the world's biggest movement of its kind. Now more than 6,300 signatories representing 200 million inhabitants in 54 countries have embarked on investments totaling some 109 billion euros. The strength of the Covenant of Mayor lie in a binding political commitment, the involvement of citizens and vision supported by rigorous follow-up that delivers tangible results on the ground. The European Innovation Partnership on Smart Cities and Communities has been successfully working since uh, uh, 2013 to establish strategic partnership between industry and European cities in order to develop the urban systems and infrastructures of tomorrow. Right now, more than 4,400 partners from 31 countries have signed up to collaborative action through 370 commitments to action. In parallel, the Horizon 2020 Energy Work Program features 200 million euros for co-funding smart cities and communities lighthouse projects or the Civitas initiative which supports cities in testing new technological and innovative concepts for more sustainable local transport as well as the Smart Cities and Communities European Innovation Partnership. 
These are highly visible, large-scale showcases of smart city solutions integrating technologies from energy, transport and information and communication technologies where lead cities demonstrate and followers replicate. Talking about replication, I would like to mention some examples of good practices as a key way to multiply benefits of smart cities. I would like to refer to what I often call as the hardware of our cities. The energy infrastructure from electricity grids to gas distribution systems, the transportation infrastructure, ICT infrastructure, waste management and water supplies infrastructure. Linking up this hardware is a necessity to increase efficiency. For example, why not use the body heat from the many commuters in major train stations to heat buildings next door? This is not science fiction, it's already happening in Stockholm. Or take Amsterdam, which is increasing the number of houses powered by renewable energy to 80,000 from 5,000 today and is doubling the number of houses connected to the district heating system from 62,000 to over 100,000. Or take London, where in November the world witnessed the first ever bus to run on waste on the roads of Britain, cutting emissions and reducing pollution. It is in our cities that innovative uh, apps are tested, like Wiesbaden, once considered one of the worst biking cities in Germany, and now a frontrunner in technological bicycle-friendly innovation. Smartening of cities in the area of transport and smart urban mobility are priority themes for achieving the transport policy goals of decarbonization and digitalization. And that is also why decarbonization is at the core of the energy union strategy that I presented last February. And that was soon thereafter unanimously endorsed by all the European heads of state and government. But, it is our, but cities are not part of this problem. They are part of the solution. Let me mention some examples. Copenhagen aims to become carbon neutral by 2025. Rotterdam aims to achieve 50% CO2 reduction by 2025. London aims to reduce the number of road death and serious road injuries by 40% by 2020. And Stockholm would like to become a vision zero city with no road fatalities. I'm sure that there are more examples like this and I invite you to share them with me. Let's multiply these examples and let's exchange them. The more others can benefit from good practices the more we are on track to build a sustainable Europe. Sustainability efforts such as these pay off in the long term. In the short term, however, they often cost money. This brings me to my next point, financing. Rebuilding our city's infrastructure is a daunting task, both financially and operationally. President Juncker's investment plan is aimed at unlocking public and private investment in the real economy of at least 315 billion euros over the next three years, in particular in projects which would have not otherwise been able to secure private funding. This plan will provide an opportunity for scaling up investments in cities. Funding under the European Structural Investment Funds will be of tremendous relevance to cities and regions with 5% of the European Regional Development Fund ring fenced for integrated strategies for urban development. 11.2 billion euros alone will be allocated to urban mobility, an increase of 40% and 70 billion euros just for energy efficiency in buildings. The success of uh, these initiatives is encouragement to look to the future. By 2030, at least 27 of the energy consumed in Europe should come from renewable sources. And the European Union should be at least 27% more energy efficient. And this target will be reviewed by 2020 at the latest, having in mind an EU level target of 30% for 2030. Next year, we will propose, therefore, a review of the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive and the Energy Efficiency Directive. In the Commission, we see an even greater role for cities in meeting these targets by 2030. We believe that the Covenant of Mayors should be extended beyond 2020 to continue supporting the considerable work carried out by the European cities. The Covenant of Mayors provide the platform to replicate smart city solutions throughout the European Union and even beyond. Synergies like this will bring benefits both in terms of energy, climate change and innovation. 
The Covenant of Myers and uh, the Smart Cities and Communities Initiative will therefore play a key enabling role to deliver on the energy union objectives. Cities and communities are willing to take an active part in the energy transition and they should be supported. Last element, which I would like to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, is let's go global on urban issues. Our initiatives towards cities do not stop at Europe's border. We will have to continue to shape the debate on urbanization in the rest of the world. With nearly 70% of the world's population living in urban areas by 2050, urban policy increases in importance. So let me reassure you once again, ladies and gentlemen, that cities are at the center of our European priorities, ranging from the growth and investment agenda through the energy union to the digital single market. In this collaborative spirit, I wish you a very successful conference that will hopefully lead to many good collaborations and trigger many good new innovative solutions to make our cities smarter and better places to live in. Thank you for your attention.